Hello, my name is Eddie Topic. I'm Head of Technical Analysis and Senior Markets Analyst at ADM Investor Service International Limited. And here is your weekly technical analysis of Paris Rapeseed, Winnipeg Canola and Malaysian Palm Oil. Paris Rapeseed. Let's start with a mid-March, late April rising wedge pattern highlighted in dark blue on my daily chart. It's a small to medium-sized pattern, I liked it. We had a false break lower in mid-April, but the real break higher happened two weeks after, gapping higher at the turn of the month into May, out of the ascending wedge pattern. Now please remember that gap there, as it will feature again shortly. Okay, so the break higher from the ascending wedge quickly reached the primary target, but hesitated over the start of May, resting it seemed on the purple highlighted neckline, currently at 486 and three quarters. That should have also acted as a cap, but ended up acting as a support once prices pushed through on the upside. Please remember this hesitation also, and the purple neckline as well, as they will also crop up again shortly. Two weeks ago, prices drove higher to highs not seen since July last year, for another gapping move higher, since filled in, and another feature I'd like to note and remember, that filled gap. This drive finally saw the market reach the secondary hard to reach target for the ascending wedge pattern. However, uh, this is not the end of the story as past features had been dictating future potentials. In this case, it was the two gapping moves higher and hesitation seen in early to mid-May. I'll start with the gaps. Theory suggests the gaps happen in threes, a breakaway, a midway and an exhaustion gap. These are not exact, but I suggested last week that we may well have an exhaustion gap in a few weeks time, possibly in the 515 area, should we get up there. I stress once again, this is not an exact number or time that you can nail down, just a potential expectation. Well, this potential has now become dissipated and I will retire Target X after this commentary. Then we have the hesitation seen in the middle of May. I said last week and I quote, this can be seen as a potential half hesitation with potential up to, wait for it, a Target X in the 515 area as well. I will be very interested to see how these things develop and what roadblocks crop up to try and stop them happening. End of quote. Well, what we ended up having is a failure to try higher, but with a very unusual pattern. You see, what we had was a topping action over the last three weeks. But we have a handle going into this pattern, so it's in and then there's a topping action formed since last April. Now, normally I would expect to see a handle on a V bottom or a V top and usually after the top itself had formed. They sometimes happen before, but these are rare. And this is such a case of an early handle, except it's not a V top. So altogether, it's actually a quite a rare pattern. Anyway, this week prices have dropped down through the purple neckline and the next support below is the rising short medium moving average, currently at 471 even. It's broken through the, the uptrend from the end of February as well. Now this short medium moving average which isn't that great and it's just ahead of the June 2021 low at 468 and three quarters and the 2013 high at 468 and a quarter neither of whom look that great it may be that we next see support at the 50% Fibonacci line the May to July 2023 move at 456 and a half and that is actually quite a bit of a distance Winnipeg Canola the halt to the decline from last year ended up as a nice, neat horn bottom just ahead of the December 2020 low of 567. Since then, prices have rallied higher during late February and into March, up through the May 2023 low at 611.10, the 2021 low at 629.60, the green highlighted short medium moving average currently at 652.80, and towards the end of the first rally, the medium moving average currently at 633.60, and towards 
and the sorry, also the June 2021 low at 655.90. These last two, especially the medium moving average, eroded the bullish incentive enough in late March and early April that the market halted and rebuffed trying higher for such a long while. Especially the testing of the next overhead resistance, which is the dark blue highlighted neckline currently up 642.90 of the April to June 2023 reverse head shoulders continuation pattern. Between these two, the market has, has been capped and prices have, uh, have dipped lower. This whole action further supports the idea I had at the time for the action since November last year to early, early May this year to be a possible descending scallop pattern in construction. However, in the last days of May, the market staged a move higher, breaking up through the dark blue neckline, then the June 2021 low, and most recently the gold highlighted descending long moving average, currently 371.30. All this action set up the opportunity for three potential features. The first was to look at the whole of the action from the horn bottom in February to date as a bullish halfway hesitation. Secondly, as I mentioned last week, we're all set up with still a week to go for the month of May to be a monthly key reversal, which it eventually became. Thirdly, there was still the idea of the ascending scallop pattern, but with a break higher instead of lower. I said of this idea last week, and I quote, this last one looks particularly ambitious, end of quote. However, all these three, despite the monthly key reversal up, all these three have failed to impress this market. And we have seen a fall this week below the gold highlighted long moving average, below the short medium moving average, and for a day below the dark blue neckline as well. We now have the Mauve highlighted medium moving average below, currently at 633.60, and the 2021 low at 629.5. But I expect we may see stronger support emerge down at the May 2023 low at 611.10, but we shall see if that's going to be the case. Last week, I drew a mid-February to very early May bullish Andrews pitchfork. And I said at the time, and I quote, I like this bullish Andrews pitchfork as it shows the bullish angle attack of this market quite well, but I'm not in love with it and I would retire it or place it with a bullish shift pitchfork if I thought they would do would be a better fit. End of quote. Well, today I decided to finesse this bullish Andrews into a shallower bullish shift pitchfork as there's an even better fit, which you can see highlighted in on my daily chart in purple. At the moment, we're in between the lower time below, currently at 6.33.30, uh, and which is right now reinforcing the medium moving average, and the middle time above, currently at 6.67.30. Finally, I would only once again add the following as a postscript to what I have already said. It's something I said about 22 weeks ago, and I quote, I'll add this final thought. I'm increasingly becoming interested in knowing this contract is really an indicator a leader, if you will, or what the other oil seeds and vegetables may have to deal with to do this to this. Um, I added 11 weeks ago and I quote, this also means on any recovery and move back up and not only on the way down. Versa Malaysia Palm One. It has been months, many months indeed, since we had the key break higher over the upper time currently at 38.53 of the August to November 2022 bearish shift pitchfork. Yet I've still kept this pitchfork still on my daily chart and last week even highlighted it in purple. Why have I done both these things? My reasoning became clear over May as the market hesitated and apparently started building a base on this very thoroughly broken upper time helped by the 50% Fibonacci line on the May 2023 to April 2024 move at 38.75, as well as the gold highlighted flatlining long moving average currently at 38.82. And also the bright red highlighted May 2023 to date uptrend currently at 38.62. So after the moves higher in March, we had the decline in April and during May, we have had the start of what now looks like a bottoming action is only becoming evident now, especially with April being a monthly key reversal down, but it does have some significant elements. So what now? Well, 11 weeks ago, I gave my thoughts on what was going on and I quote, so what now? Well, for this, I went to my standby on such occasions, the longer term monthly charts, and there was one clear standout level that needed to be watched. And that was the November 2022 high of 4408. 
This is a key, key level on the top side because if it is broken and properly broken, then there are some very significant potentials top side. Similarly, if it holds, then there are some very significant potentials on the downside. So watch to see if prices reach up to the 4408 area and then what prices do at that level, if they get there, obviously. End of quote. I can think of no better way than to still monitor what the, pro what the market does should we get up there uh, to the 4408 level. We just need to overcome the mauve highlighted medium moving average currently at 4018, then the dark blue neckline currently at 4101 of the September to November 2023, 2023 reverse head and shoulders bottom, the green highlighted short medium moving average currently at 4073, the July high at July high at 4189 for 2023 that is, and the twin 38.2% Fibonacci lines of the July 19 to March 22 move at 42.39 and the May 20 to March 22 move at 42.74. With the neckline of the September 2015 to November 2017 head and shoulders top currently at 42.69. In between. If prices do rise, and this is where I come to this week's action, last week we made a weekly key reversal up and then the changeover gapped lower this week but that is not the whole story as we have been moving higher today filling in that gap and now uh, forming actually a, a daily key reversal uh, up uh, today and now testing a key feature the green highlighted neckline currently at uh, 3958 of the late april to late may reverse head and shoulders pattern now, I could lay out some targets topside for this pattern, but I suspect the market has already reached the primary target and will soon likely reach the secondary target as well, which is in the 40, 41, 20 area. Yet all this does not take away from what are two essential move stroke questions of this market. The first one deals with where we are now, and that is between the bright red uptrend below and the dark blue neckline above. We are in essence still where we are, were at the end of April, calling between these two. And the question is, which way next? The answer, well, is still not clear, the answer. Secondly, is the action since the beginning of May, sorry, the beginning of April, especially since mid-April today, does this action look like a bearish half hesitation or a reverse head and shoulders pattern combined to look like a rounded bottom? On this last one, the situation is still early, but right now I am minded to look at it as a rounded bottom pattern. But it will very much depend on what the market does and the green short medium moving average, and especially at the dark blue neckline overhead at, at current levels. Especially when we see what happens at those levels. Thank you for listening. This weekly broadcast gives the essential market patterns and consequences. Please be aware of the risk disclaimer posted both at the front and at the back of this broadcast. Copyright is Eddie Tofpik and ADM Investor Service International Limited. And here comes the final important bit.